Ever heard the expression, this town ain't big enough for the both of us? However, they can purr. Well, it's not just towns, but deserts, forests, lakes, and even the sky that aren't big enough for some species. From tigers who take on mighty crocodiles, to kings of the jungle fighting it out with laughing hyenas, here's 15 animals that hate each other. <sighs> Number 15. Tigers vs. Crocodiles these two are among the most ferocious predators on Earth. Luckily, most of the time, they stay out of each other's way. That is, apart from on the Indian subcontinent, where ferocious Bengal tigers often encounter mugger crocodiles, who are the most common crocodilians in that part of the world. The mugger crocodile is not the biggest croc out there, but it can still manage 16 feet or 5 meters in length, and weigh in at over 400 pounds or 200 kilos. It lurks in murky water. Waters, its muddy-colored skin helping it to blend in until a helpless deer wanders by and pow! Those huge jaws can take it down with ease. And that's a deer. And we're not talking about crocodiles versus deers, we're talking about crocodiles versus the Bengal tiger. This is one of nature's baddest predators, outweighing the biggest crocs by up to 80 pounds or 30 kilos. Not only that, it's agile, powerful, and intelligent. <laughs> the two usually meet when a croc has taken the risk of leaving its watery home, and the two big predators cross paths on dry land, where the tiger has a clear home advantage. But even in the water, the tiger is a strong swimmer, and will still defeat a crocodile almost every time. The bite force and huge canines of the tiger mean that even the largest mugger crocs will fall prey to the tiger. However, much more rarely, a Bengal tiger can encounter a mighty saltwater crocodile, a true monster growing up to 20 feet. 6 meters, and weighing as much as 2,200 pounds, or 1,000 kilos. It's recorded that a 15-foot-long salty killed a Bengal tiger in the swamps of West Bengal. So for the tigers, it's a case of pick on someone your own size once in a while, and see what happens. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Lions vs. Hyenas In an age-old conflict of the African savanna, two apex predators face off in a never-ending struggle for territory and food, the lion and the hyena. At first glance, the lion would seem to be the strongest in this particular battle, being of much greater size and strength. But it's not so simple as that. Both animals work in groups. Lions in their pride, hyenas in a pack. The two are well-balanced enemies, and resort to brutal tactics such as attacking and killing one another's young cubs or pups in revenge. Most showdowns come when competing for scavenging rights over a dead piece of prey, and the hyenas, with their incredible stamina and high intelligence, can often win the day against the big cats. Their excellent pack coordination can work in their favor, and hyenas are a brave animal that's not easily scared by a male lion's roar. They're also hard-working dogs who sacrifice a lot for the good of the pack, unlike the male lion who sleeps all day and waits for the female to bring back the food. One-on-one, -on -one, the lion wins, but when it comes to fighting out in a group, and it usually does, the wild dogs with their huge hearts and cunning brains, can make life a real misery for the lions. Number 13. Elephant vs. Buffalo These are two of the so-called Big Five of Africa, along with lions, leopards, and rhinoceroses. And they also cross paths, often enough for some serious rivalry to have developed. On paper, the elephant looks to have a pretty major advantage over his water-waiting enemy, weighing in at almost six times as much as the buffalo. But what the buffalo lacks in size, it makes up for an all-out bad-tempered crankiness. And no self-respecting water buffalo is going to be pushed around by an elephant. They will stand their ground and stare that pachyderm down like a tough-as-nails flyweight buffalo.
boxer, showing Tyson Fury he ain't afraid of nobody. Sometimes this strategy works out for the buffalo, causing the elephant to take a step back, probably wondering what the little guy's got up his sleeve. But then, sometimes, the elephant doesn't do that at all. Sometimes, the elephant just picks up the entire 1,300-pound, or 600-kilo, buffalo with its tusks and flings it to its death, high up in the air. Because it's an elephant. Elephants are huge. Elephants are awesome. Don't mess with elephants, even if you are an angry buffalo. Number 12. Cheetah vs. Ostrich We've had brute strength, brains, and bravery, but now we're into another kind of deep rivalry, and one that's based on speed. Ostrich versus Cheetah, another battle that plays out day after day in Africa. The ostrich is no slouch and can run at speeds of over 40 miles per hour, 65 kilometers per hour, but it is no match for the cheetah, which can reach speeds of 75 miles per hour, or 120 kilometers per hour, and is the fastest animal on Earth. <coughs> However, this doesn't mean that the ostrich is by any means easy prey for the cheetah. First of all, the ostrich has far more stamina, and the cheetah can only maintain those incredible speeds for short bursts, so the big cats have to work in teams and make sure to strike quickly. Secondly, the ostrich is a strong bird, and a single cheetah wouldn't have the strength to take it down alone. But, rarely, a team of cheetahs can make one of the giant birds into a tasty meal, if they get their hunt just right and stay away from the pretty nasty claws on the bird's feet. One kick could kill a cheetah. These two are never going to be friends, and cheetahs also sometimes eat ostrich eggs if they don't feel like chasing down one of the, you know, moving ones. Number 11. Falcon vs. Pigeon It's fair to say this is a pretty one-sided battle. The pigeon's only job in life, apart from feeding and reproducing, is to stay out of the way of the many predators who have a taste for pigeon meat the foremost of which is the spectacular peregrine falcon. Unlike most of these rivalries, this one often takes place in major cities, where falcons stalk the skies hardly noticed by humans. But should a pigeon fail to notice, it spells very bad news indeed. The falcon rains held down upon the pigeon population of the world at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour. When it is in full dive, blink and you'll miss it. The worst thing of all is that falcons aren't especially bothered if the poor pigeon they are clutching in their razor-sharp talons is even dead before they start eating it. And the bad news just keeps on coming in for pigeons. Those pesky humans are doing all they can to introduce more peregrine falcons to many cities worldwide to help control the pigeon population. Those pigeons must really hate the sight of those falcon wings. That is, if they have the time to catch sight of the fastest bird in the world before being swept away as its latest meal. Number 10. Kangaroo vs. Dog Kangaroos don't normally wait around to see what a pack of wild dingoes want. The big marsupials hop away at top speed to escape any confrontation with these pack animals. <coughs> Normally, kangaroos would react in a similar way to any approach from a curious or aggressive domestic dog. But not always. Kangaroos have been known to fight back against dogs and can quite often end up victorious, in spite of their herbivorous lifestyle. Maybe the most interesting things about kangaroo versus dog fights are the intelligent and ingenious methods deployed by some kangaroos to defeat their enemy. Sometimes they will grab a dog by the head and put him in a headlock, just like a WWE wrestler standing and holding with its incredibly muscular arms until the dog's neck is broken or it dies of strangulation. On other occasions, kangaroos have been observed 
holding dogs' heads underwater to drown them. Smart enough to know that no more air means no more threat from Fido. And if none of that does the trick, then the ruse can use their huge feet and long, sharp claws to tear up anything that wants to attack it. Kangaroos are seriously badass marsupials, and not many creatures would be willing to take on one of these Aussie national icons. Number 9. Camel Spider vs. Scorpion Time for an all-arachnid showdown. The Camel Spider. Good god, what can you say about this creature other than it is truly terrifying? They have an extra pair of legs, which are really sensors to help them locate prey. Can run it up to 10 miles an hour, that's 16 kilometers an hour, and these 6 inch or 15 centimeter monsters have jaws which take up a third of their entire body length. Living in the African desert, they are sometimes known as the Kalahari Ferrari for their incredible speed. These nightmarish beasts are also adept tree climbers, and have been known to follow human beings. So fearless are they, and are even rumored to enjoy the taste of human flesh, becoming something of a terror to US soldiers serving in Iraq in the early 2000s war there. Their main diet includes giant venomous centipedes and rats. Are you scared yet? I am. Back during another war, the First World War of 1914-1918, British soldiers stationed in the desert regions of Egypt and Libya would capture camel spiders and place bets on them fighting against other terrors of the desert, including scorpions. While a scorpion is a brave and powerful fighter, more often than not, it would end up as little more than a snack for the huge spider. I'll stick to betting on baseball if it's all the same to you. Number 8. Polar Bear vs. Walrus a polar bear is a mighty predator and the undisputed numero uno up in the Arctic. Being a pretty confident kind of bear, most bears are pretty confident, so no surprise the biggest bear of all knows how to strut around its territory. The polar bear will usually try and make a meal out of almost anything it finds in its territory that appeals to its appetite. A big, blubbery walrus often looks like just the kind of thing it's been hoping to feed feast on. But a walrus is no pushover in a fight against a polar bear, and when attacked it will often escape into the water where its own advantages start to become apparent. While a walrus is not an apex predator, living mainly as it does on mollusks, it does weigh three times as much as the average polar bear and has huge tusks like sabers protruding from its mouth, not to mention being a mass of muscle and blubber. Once in the water, the walrus is far more agile than the bear, and will escape with ease. On land, the polar bear can take down a walrus if it judges its attack just right, but if it misjudges, a cornered walrus will fight back like, well, like a big, fat, angry walrus and can often inflict fatal wounds upon the attacking polar bear. As the polar bear ice shrinks due to climate change, these dangerous battles are becoming increasingly common, and rarely to the benefit of either species. Number 7. Badger vs. Snake Honey badger don't care. We know that already, but the honey badger don't care so much that it even goes as far as not caring about super venomous snakes, which make up some 25% of its diet. There's a few specialist snake hunters in the mammal kingdom, such as the mongoose, but most of those rely on stealth, cunning, agility, and the element of surprise to take down their dangerous prey before they themselves end up the ones in serious trouble. Not the honey badger though. He just rolls on over, takes one look, and starts swiping that cobra to death. Black Mamba? No fear. He'll just eat that thing up like a chili dog. Venomous snakes kill around 95,000 humans a year, and countless other mammals. Yet these badgers don't seem to have a worry. Part of that is due to their all-action, aggressive style, which leaves their enemies little time to figure out what is going on. But it's also down to the honey badger having a kind of anti-venom in its blood. 
This means that even if a snake can bite through all that thick fur and skin, the venom is neutralized by the badger's body anyway. This is bad news for snakes, but if evolution has anything to do with it, the snakes of the world will soon be armed with even more powerful venom to defend themselves, which can only be great news for everyone, right? Number 6. Octopus vs. Shark well, normally, this is pretty much one-way traffic. Sharks eat octopuses. And there's not a whole lot the octopus can do about it. Because, you know, giant fish with teeth versus little squishy mollusk thing isn't really a fair fight. Sometimes, though, the tables are turned, and a really huge octopus can take down a really tiny shark in an act of species revenge for all his fallen brothers and sisters. The giant Pacific octopus is certainly giant, but anything but Pacific. Staff at the Seattle Aquarium thought that this octopus would live harmoniously in a tank with a few small dogfish, a kind of shark, for company. They knew the octopus wouldn't be able to eat the sharks, and nor would the sharks be able to take on the octopus for food. So it seemed like a harmonious marine stalemate. That is, until the lifeless, mutilated bodies of the dogfish kept floating to the top of the tank. Finally, they managed to get to the bottom of the murder mystery and discovered the giant Pacific octopus was taking the sharks in its tentacles and then ripping them to pieces before discarding them. Friendly. Since then, Hannibal Lecter the octopus has been put in his own tank, in solitary, with no parole, and a team of aquarium psychiatrists nervously asking him about his childhood. Number 5. Hippos vs. Crocodiles if these two animals hate each other, they have a strange way of showing it. You'd think that an A1 apex predator, like a big crocodile, would be pretty happy to have a wallowing, fat-covered plant eater living in the water right next to it. But this plant-eating water wallower is a hippo. And hippos are… well, let's say this. No one messes with a hippo. Crocs will sometimes take the risk of trying to pinch a hippo calf to eat, but even this can result in a very bad day for the crocodile. Hippos are not only extremely aggressive, but there's little even a crocodile can do to fight off a full-grown hippopotamus. Their four huge, saber-like teeth can be brought down on a croc's body, applying 450 pounds or 200 kilos of pressure each. Plus, that mouth is simply enormous and could easily bite a man in half, something they often do, accounting for 500 human deaths a year. The hippo isn't all about attack either, as its skin is around 3 inches or 7 centimeters thick and acts as armor plating, should the croc actually manage to get the chance to take a bite. So these two semi-aquatic monsters have called a kind of eternal truce, neither one really bothering the other too much. The hippos don't eat croc meat, and the crocs, well, they just know better than to go there. Number 4. Elephant vs. Rhino here again, we have something of a mismatch, and you get the feeling that rhinos probably really hate the sight of bull elephants, while the elephants, well, it seems to depend on their mood. Normally, elephants don't attack rhinos, which is great news for the rhinos, since when they do, it usually only has one outcome, and it looks something like a rhinoceros shish kebab. These events are pretty rare and only happen at watering holes where everyone is a little tense as pretty much every super beast in Africa turns up for a drink at the same time and, well, things can get a little heated, especially if the elephants are with calves. But back in 1994, conservationists at the Plainsburg Game Reserve in South Africa noticed a spate of violent rhino murders, which could only have been committed by big male elephants. They had the suspect, but they needed a motive. Why were elephants suddenly taking out their aggression on unsuspecting rhinos? They were far from any watering holes, 
Well, it turns out that, a little like humans, these elephants were turning delinquent due to broken family backgrounds. Normally, male elephants are turned out into the world by their mothers aged about 15, and they attach themselves to older males to learn the ways of the world. But since this was early in the efforts at elephant conservation, there weren't enough males around yet. So the young bulls went a little crazy and beat on the poor rhinos. Number 3. Zebra vs. Lion The zebra is one of the lion's favorite meals, and the long-suffering striped animals have to put up with pretty consistent attacks by lions throughout their lives, which can end with a lion's teeth chewing on their neck. But zebras aren't the easy prey you might imagine, and are more than capable of making life difficult for the lions. A sharp kick to the head of a lion from a zebra can be enough to break a lion's jaw, which often results in the lion's starvation, or can even outright kill a lion. Still, if you're going to put money down, back on the lion. Unless you like living on the edge, in which case you might want to back the zebra. And if you really like living on the edge, why not head out to a game reserve in Africa and take a walk in a black and white striped coat? Number 2. Tigers vs Impala Well, we're getting a little crazy with this one because these two guys would probably never meet outside of some crazy zoo jailbreak situation. But how would an Impala and a tiger get along if they did meet? Impalas are one of Africa's most graceful animals, with spectacular black twisted horns on their heads, and they live on grasslands and savannas. They are fantastic jumpers, jumping as far as 33 feet, 10 meters, or as high as 10 feet, 3 meters. This means that when running from predators, they can almost fly over any obstacles in the way while the predator would have to go around. And boy, are they fast. And that's where they would have an advantage over any tiger that found itself lost in Africa. A tiger is pretty fast, but not fast enough to catch one of these guys. Not to mention a tiger's style of solitary hunting and camouflage are adapted to their Asian jungles or tundras, so they'd be a little indiscreet out on the plains. But drop a poor impala into a tiger's territory in thick Indian undergrowth, and then the stealth and skill of the tiger would surely win the day. Number 1. Parrot vs Cat From Asian tundra and the African savanna to your own home. Ever wanted to have both a house cat and a parrot as pets under the same roof? <laughs> Well, the cat and the bird are natural enemies. Remember Sylvester and Tweety Pie? But as ever in nature, it all depends on the size of the critters involved. A big parrot has a strong beak and some nasty claws, so any house cat will have to be pretty determined to make Polly into its dinner. Unfortunately for the parrots, however, even a single swipe from a cat can be enough to kill since cat claws contain a kind of bacteria which is often deadly to parrots. The conclusion to this friendship can often be tragic, especially for the parrot, even the big ones. So if you're thinking of putting both in your house, better keep an eye on them until you're sure they're… Have you ever seen two animals who hate each other? Which of the animals above would you most like to be? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!